The Jinhao 82 is a fairly compact fountain pen that was released earlier this year. The overall shape is reminiscent of the Sailor Pro Gear Slim, and we'll do a direct comparison of those two models in just a moment. In the short time this pen has been on the market, it's really exploded in popularity, and it's now offered in what I count as 24 unique colors. The colors range from fully opaque to fully transparent, as well as translucent models like the one we have here. This one is deep blue with light sparkles throughout. The finials are both flat. The top finial is separated by the cap with a single gold band. You can also get the trim in silver. There's then a bent metal clip that's springy and functional. And as we work our way down the cap, we have another gold band that reads Jin Hao and nothing on the back. And then there's a slight step down to the barrel. The cap comes off in one two full rotations to reveal a stainless steel two-tone nib. In the silver portion of the nib, we have the Jin Hao Chariot logo, Jin Hao, and then an M for medium. You can also get this pen in extra fine, fine, and a bent foudé. At the top of the section, we have a slight flare-up, and then a tapering portion down to a gold band. There's then threads that are smooth to the touch, followed by a step up to the barrel, and the barrel tapers gradually down to another gold band, followed by the infinial. In the hand, the pen is compact, lightweight, and well-balanced. It's good for quick note-taking, but not for long writing sessions. And the cap does post deeply and securely. The pen maintains a very good balance. The cap adds some heft to it, which makes it a great pen for long writing sessions. In terms of size comparisons, here we have the Jinhao 82, a typical Pilot G2 rollerball pen, and your standard Sharpie. Comparing the Jinhao 82 with the Sailor Pro Gear Slim, this is the Shikori Vega edition. I feel like these two finishes match each other pretty nicely, though the Sailor is fully opaque, while the Jinhao has a little bit more translucency to it. The overall dimensions are very similar between these two pens. The Sailor has a little bit more of an ornate clip. Also, it has that classic anchor style logo at the top of the finial. And the cap band has an extra thin band at the top, whereas the Jin Hao just has a single band. Um, both pens screw to uncap. The Sailor has a very nice 14 karat gold nib, whereas the Jin Hao is a two-tone stainless steel. The Sailor's nib is a little bit more exposed, which I feel like makes the pen a hair longer than the Jin Hao. The section on the Sailor is a little thinner than the Jin Hao and a little bit shorter to that metal band. Both then have the same threads up to a barrel that ends with another band followed by the finial. Let's take a look at these pens posted. Both pens post extremely deeply, and again, the Sailor is just a hair longer because of that more exposed nib. I mentioned at the top of the video that the pen was offered in a wide variety of colors. Here we have four different versions. The blue translucent one that we just looked at that has sparkles throughout. A purple translucent one that you can see is just very subtly translucent. A red opaque and a black opaque. Let's take a look at these pens uncapped. Uncapped, we can see that all of the pen sections match their body finish. And due to the wide variety of color options, I've noticed some sellers are starting to offer Franken pens that have finials and sections that contrast the pen bodies. And I'll show you how to Frankenstein your own pen in just a moment during the disassembly. Let's take a look at these pens posted. All caps post deeply and securely to provide a good size fountain pen for long writing sessions. To disassemble the Jin Hao 82, for regular cleaning, you don't need any tools, but if you want to do a really deep clean, you may need something to use as a poker. Cap unscrews, and we'll disassemble that further in just a moment. The section unscrews from the barrel. We then have a converter that pulls right out and the nib and feed unscrew from this section. 
There is an O-ring at the end of the section. If you want to remove it, you can, but it's not there for sealing or anything like that. It's really just there to help prevent the barrel from unscrewing from the section. The end finial pulls off the barrel. That's one point where I wish that they would have added screws as I think that would help with long-term durability. And then we have a ring and our end finial. To disassemble the cap, unscrew finial. And that all comes apart in a few pieces. We have the clip, we have a washer, and we have a metal insert that screws onto the plastic finial. I'll leave those two connected for now. Inside the cap, we have a brass nut and a cap liner. To remove that, we need to take off this bottom piece. In order to do this, you're gonna to have to break some adhesive. I found that my adhesive on this pen actually failed after some time, but if you're having trouble with that and you really wanna take this apart, apply a little bit of heat and you'll be able to break through. So this all unscrews. And then we have a bottom portion with the cap ring. Then we're gonna take our poker and push through from the top. And we'll get our cap liner followed by a brass piece. And at this point, we have the pen fully disassembled. To reassemble, let's start with the barrel. We're gonna grab our trim ring. Be careful, this is slightly tapered, so we wanna make sure it's tapering towards the barrel. And the end finial pushes on. Then we'll take our section and our nib and feed and screw those into place. And then we'll take our converter and push that into the section and screw that entire assembly into the barrel. To assemble the cap, we're going to start with the top. We'll take our finial and the washer. If you look closely, there's an indent in the washer right there. That's to help hold the clip. And then we'll take our clip. And that is ready to go back into the pen. And then we're gonna take our brass nut, drop that down, followed by the cap liner. And then this last piece, make sure that you have Jin Hao facing up. Slide that in and screw the whole thing down. Now we have to do a little bit of work to try and get that brass nut to line up with this hole. So again, grab your poker piece. Let's start with pushing the liner up and then moving the nut so that it's in line. I'm going to keep the poker underneath so that I can apply pressure as I screw down the rest of this assembly. Perfect. And now you have your pen fully assembled. In order to create a Franken pen, you're going to need two somewhat disassembled. Here I removed the caps and the barrels as well as the end finials. Let's start with the black section. We'll put that into the red barrel. And then we'll put on the black end finial. Next, grab it, the red cap and screw that in place. And then we'll top that off with the black and finial, which screws on. Next, we'll do the same thing with the red section. Place it into uh, the black barrel, followed by the red and finial, 
the black cap. And the red top finial screws into place. And now you have two unique Franken pens ready to ink up. Inking up the Jinhao 82, today I selected Waterman Intense Black to go with the black section on this Franken pen. Unscrew the cap, unscrew the barrel from the section, make sure the converter is all the way down. Unscrew the cap from the bottle. This one's low on ink, so I'm gonna put it on one of its facets. Place the nib into the ink and screw the piston to draw up ink. That's actually a pretty nice full fill. Usually I do that twice in order to get rid of air pockets, but I feel like that's more than enough. We'll wipe off the excess ink. Put the barrel back on and the cap. And we're ready to write. Okay, writing with the Jinhao 82. Cap unscrews. And here we have a stainless steel fine. And this nib is very well tuned, especially for an affordable pen. Um, it's smooth, it does have some feedback, but it's not at all scratchy. Our ink is Waterman Intense Black. For Flex, not really a Flex pen, maybe a little bit of line variation, but not much. And for reverse writing, you get a little bit more feedback. It's actually not very scratchy. The feed mostly kept up and the line thickness, I wouldn't say is much thinner. So in a pinch you could reverse write, but I don't think that there's much value in it. And let's take a look at one other one. Here's the blue one that we started off with. And this one has a medium nib. And our ink on this one is a Sailor. Yama Dory. This nib is a bit smoother than the fine, which is to be expected, and the line width is maybe a little bit thicker, but it's not dramatically different. Personally, I prefer the medium, but you know, your taste may vary. So what do I think of the Jinhao 82? You can often find this pen for under $10, and if you really look, you can get it for under five, which is a remarkable value for a comfortable fountain pen that has a good sealing cap and a nib that is fairly reliable. I do occasionally see hard starts, but it's pretty rare. And I can't really think of another pen that has that kind of value that's on the market right now. The other portion of this pen that I think is a huge value is the wide variety of finishes. You can get this in virtually any color that you want. And if you want to Frankenstein your pen, you can quite easily. 
Does it look a lot like the Sailor Pro Gear Slim? There's certainly similarities. I wouldn't say that it's a full out copy of it, but it does have inspiration for sure. Um, but I, most pens on the market are inspired by other pens. Areas that I think this could be improved on, there aren't really many. Um, it was a little bit disappointing to see the adhesive fill at the bottom of this cap, but at the same time, that was kind of a pro because then I could fully disassemble and clean the cap liner. So it's kind of a hit or miss with that. Um, the top finial, I like that it can be unscrewed. I wish they would have done the same with the bottom finial. I feel like over time, if you keep taking this finial off, it's going to crack. And the other thing is for the translucent and the transparent models, I think it would have been nice if they made this an eyedropperable pen. Removing that finial means that this is definitely going to leak ink, but also the design of the section being metal and not having a seal at the bottom means you definitely cannot eyedropper this pen. But besides that, I think it's an incredible value. If you're new to fountain pens, you can pick these up and for under 20 bucks, you can get an extra fine, a fine, a medium and a food day, which really should give you the full gambit of nib sizes to figure out exactly what works best for you. And that alone is a great value. So that just leaves me to say. Thank you for watching.